Anyways, <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Roxy and welcome to my kitchen. Today, I don't have a cameraman, <laughs> my partner. Um, he is at a dentist appointment, so I'm going to just basically be ducking down like this when I need to talk. Uh, basically, it's Thursday and I like to prepare my dessert for the weekend. This week, I am so excited to be sharing a safe, edible cookie dough with you. Did you know that it's so easy to make and so tasty? Well, I'm not one for eating a cookie dough raw or um, eating cake batter raw, so I really wanted to create a recipe that was going to be safe. And I'm here to share it with you today. To get started, do we need special equipment? No, not really. The only thing that's really special that I don't think is in every kitchen is these ice cream scoopers. So that's kind of the only special piece of equipment I think that we'll need today. Otherwise, I think everything that we have here ever, I think most people have it in their kitchens. So which ingredients do we need today? seven base ingredients. The first starting with all-purpose flour, the second room temperature butter, granulated sugar, brown sugar, lighter, light or dark, works great, salt, and milk or half and half, usually whichever you have around. Let's see. Also, make sure you have something that's lined. You can line a baking tray, but I have a cutting board that I just put pipe. Uh, parchment paper on and I think that should work just fine and let's get into it how do we make the safe so the two things that make batter essentially unsafe is the raw flour which I'm gonna teach you how to handle and eggs <laughs> raw eggs so the eggs won't be in here that's omitted uh, the flour how can we treat it I'm gonna tell you two ways to treat it the first way is a way is a baking method. So basically you want to cook your flour at 350 degrees for five minutes or until it reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit and that will make it safe. It kind of browns around the edges but that's okay. It, you don't really notice it once you get all of the ingredients together. Oh actually the seventh and last ingredient was actually vanilla. I forgot to mention that. Um, the second way to heat your flour is in a microwave. So heat it for a minute and a half um, at a high temperature. And um, you can measure, you can, if you have a thermometer, you can actually t check the temperature. It should be about 160 degrees Fahrenheit to know that the flour is cooked. And from there, we can move on. Um, Again, some parts of the flour will be tanner and it gets a little chunky, but I'm going to teach you how to resolve that today. In a large bowl, we are going to get our room temperature butter, and that is three quarters of a cup. That's one and a half sticks of butter. Um, so some of my friends have allergies, food allergies, and wanted to know if it's possible to substitute um, for a dairy-free, something that's dairy-free, yes. Actually, you can use a non-dairy butter. And I really, really like country crocs. And I don't know if everybody has those sticks, um, but they taste really good. I, I like them a little better than Earth Balance. And then for the flour, you can use, I think you can use like an all-purpose alternative for it. So three quarters of a cup of butter. I have half of a cup, that's 100 grams of granulated sugar. <laughs> I have light brown sugar because I ran out of dark brown sugar, but it tastes really good. The only difference between the two is the molasses that's in it, so it gives it a little bit more of a um, sweet molasses flavor. I I always use pink salt. There's half a teaspoon in this. Get that in there. And then let me just make sure that I got all of the ingredients in there. Actually, let me get in my milk. So I have one tablespoon of milk that I add. 
to this. And then I'm going to get in my teaspoon now. I have this organic vanilla. This is my favorite. I talk about it in every episode that I do. <laughs> but it's a, and yet I keep forgetting, it's a Madagascar and Mexican vanilla, but it smells so good. And then mix it in. And we're going to do this for about two minutes. Oops. Can everyone, I, I'm getting an error on my computer um, when I'm watching this. So can everybody else see what's going on? So this is what it looks like so far. Not very well incorporated. Just mix, mix, mix. <laughs> Who likes my sweater? Since we weren't baking today, I thought, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock a sweater. It's not going to get as hot in here. I baked my flour earlier for about five minutes, and then I, it's completely cooled. I did it at lunchtime. Okay. I have a, a minute and five seconds left, according to this. Arms are already tired. <laughs> I didn't even work out this morning. <laughs> so here's what it looks like at a little less than a minute. It's nice and creamy. It's kind of fun to bake without a stand mixer. But don't take my stand mixer away from me because I can't imagine doing cakes all the time and doing it by hand like this. This is why I think a lot of uh, cooks and bakers have one like really strong darn dominant arm. <laughs> That's me. means I'm done mixing. So let me get that out of here. Next we're going to mix in the sifted flour. So this is, isn't sifted yet. I just weighed it. And I'm just going to get some of it in here. Is that working? <laughs> here okay anyways let's just keep going <laughs> we we're just continuing to mix the dough thanks for bearing with me <laughs> learn I it's so funny I learned so much about the tech every single time I I do one of these these videos, it's so, um, it's so testy. And I, I, I'm not doing anything vastly different between each one. And, and I just hope that <laughs> we can get through one without any technical difficulties at some point. But anyways, before it cuts out again, here's what the flour looks like, the flour dough mixture. This is the treated dough. <laughs> okay, I think this is about ready. It's all mixed. I don't see any streaks of anything. There's nothing dry. I've gotten everything nice and incorporated. So I'm just going to get a couple things out of the way. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> I have three bowls because I'm actually going to be splitting this into 
three different um, three different flavors. Because you might be wondering, Roxy, this is boring as is. I mean, do I want to just eat raw dough? Maybe. You can do that. So we can say that's the fourth flavor. But I, I wanted to do three today and just wanted to give you the measurements that I figured out for each one. So I have Oreos, chocolate chips, and sprinkles. So let's divide this. How's everyone this day, week? I mean, it's almost the weekend. It's a really long and busy week. I'm so glad to be baking with you guys. I don't know if you can see this, but I have a um, sprinkle spatula one of my friends sent me. Because I have like shoes with sprinkles. I want a hat with sprinkles. Just figure out how to get everything to be sprinkly. So if you guys can see this, I split the dough more or less evenly into each bowl. If you're splitting this into thirds, then two Oreo cookies is perfect. So let me just leave this here. I have two. I'm just going to crack them up. Put this in here. I like to leave the filling. If you have mini marshmallows, it's really good too. They kind of taste like Oreo filling. If you're going to make the entire edible cookie dough uh, into Oreo, then you'll want to use six. Then for the chocolate chips, I, I found that three, uh, two to three tablespoons is perfect. It just really depends. These are larger chocolate chips, semi-sweet. Got it right here. Pour that. I, I have another idea. I know a lot of people really like coffee, so I have these espresso um, instant coffee grinds. Instant coffee granules that, <laughs> that we got from Trader Joe's. And if you want to add this, then add one tablespoon of it. It's going to be so yummy. I, I'm, I'm going to just keep it chocolate chip. And then for the last one, two tablespoons of Jimmy's is perfect. Um, I mean, three won't hurt, but then it's mostly Jimmy's that you're eating <laughs> at that point. And Jimmy's are just another word for sprinkles. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix all of them. And this edible cookie dough is awesome for cupcake fillings. The other day I made a cookie monster cake. I can't wait to show you guys. I pre-recorded that. It's going to I can take about six weeks to, to edit before it comes out. But I used these as the filling in um, in the frosting. So, so tasty. So there's the chocolate chip. I was thinking about making a cookie monster cookie dough too. I thought that'd be so cute. So here's the Oreo. This one I thought of because um, my husband loves cookies and cream ice cream. This kind of seemed like that. Yay. <laughs> Thank you! I love my shirt too! Who made it for me? My mom. <laughs> it's smiling, right? <laughs> it's Gudatama if you guys if you guys know. One of Hello Kitty's best friends. Lazy Egg. I don't know, I just love anything kawaii and adorable and Gudatama is one of those things. Just have such a great love. And then, so let me show you that. It's all, like 
at least a couple bites of Oreos per each thing. Be really good with salt too, and then here are the jimmies. I'm just I'm just continuing to refresh just in case folks are leaving comments or not seeing it because my Wi-Fi is just so laggy today. But this is fun. I mean, sprinkles always make things a little bit funner. Funfetti sprinkles, nonpareil sprinkles. Oh, tip about sprinkles. The Jimmy sprinkles work the best with this. Um, if you want, if, I don't know, if you want the, um, I can't remember what those other ones are called right now. The confetti sprinkles work really great too, but when you use non-parels and then you add liquid to it, it, it kind of makes it, ugh, I hate using this word, but it is a technical term in baking. It causes the sprinkles to bleed and then it doesn't look that good or that appetizing. So there we go. So fast, right? Aside from technical difficulties, which I will delete out, you guys. But now we have three recipes. So let me get my stuff aside. Got my tray here. What's gonna help it be easier to see? go. So again, I have two of these ice cream scoopers. Uh, if you saw the thumbnail for my video, this is the one that I use, the tiniest one, so that they're bite size. This is kind of a Roxy bite size. Um, anyways, but today I'm going to go with this one. I thought I'd, I wanted some um, size variety. And then in a second, I'll show you how I store them and then we'll be ready. <laughs> So you might be wondering, oh, can I bake these? No. <laughs> if you bake them, they won't become cookies, they'll just become puddles because there's no leavener in there, nothing, and no egg, no baking soda, no baking powder, so nothing to really hold it together um, and help it rise. So unfortunately, no. But the other week, I made a really good chocolate chip cookie recipe and Right now, I'm working on an oatmeal cookie recipe because I, ha I know I have some visitors over the holidays that really like raisin oatmeal cookies, and I personally love chocolate chip oatmeal cookies, so I'm going to work on that. I have a, a lot of oatmeal hanging around the house because I'm trying to be a little healthier this year. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> So I have seven of the Oreo cake balls. When I did the smaller one, it was like a dozen. I don't wanna waste any of this, so I'm gonna put this with this Oreo one. I mean, chocolate chip. Let's see how even I was about eyeballing this. What are your plans for the weekend? And do you have any questions about this? Just to reiterate again, the sprinkles, two to three tablespoons is perfect for the chocolate chips, two tablespoons, and then for the Oreos, I think that two Oreos is perfect, but, you know, how can you go wrong with too many Oreos? Okay, well, not bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> so six, or seven Oreos, six um, chocolate chips. This part's my favorite. It's so fun. Ah. I was wrong. It's still hot in here. I think it's because of my lights. Am 
my ducking low enough that you guys can see me. I want to make this as interactive as possible. Tell us about the browned uh, flour. Oh, um, when when I when I baked the flour, it gets a little more brown, but the, there's no problem. You can still use that for. Um, making the cookie dough. It, you don't have to omit it, omit it at all. It's not burnt. It just gets a little toasty. And it you can kind of taste that toasting when you um, when you put this together. And so it, if you like it toasted, then actually the first time I made this dough, I baked the flour for 10 minutes instead of 5 minutes even though at five minutes it gets to the 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a safe temperature to eat the, the edible cookie dough, the safe edible cookie dough, I still, I still wanted to just experiment, like would it taste better at um, baked a little longer, cooked a little longer. So that's, that's all I meant by the brown um, cookie dough or the brown, brown flour, Sue. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I did. Oh, what notes did I make? Funfetti is just another name for rainbow sprinkles. Did you guys know that? I thought it was a copyrighted um, name by Pillsbury for their their cake recipe. And it's just a nut. different parts of the US say Funfetti and different parts say sprinkles. Some say Jimmy's. And that's kind of like how there's the soda pop um, <laughs> uh, regional words for things. And what else? Um, yeah, I distributed it. You can use quarter cups. You can use small scoopers. If you don't have scoopers, um, measuring cups work super great too. And then also you can keep this in the fridge for a week in a sealed container or up to two months. I just wanted to show you really quickly how I store it frozen. Here are the frozen ones that I did uh, previously that I've put in uh, cake since. Uh, these are the smaller scoop size, this one. And uh, you can keep it up to three months. Uh, it just needs to be in an airtight container. Tupperware works. Uh, this works. And then when you take it out, it, it really just takes, I want to say it takes five minutes to get to room temperature and eat and it's great. It's so good served with ice cream. So if you want to keep these a smaller size, folded in vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream, that's really nice. In that case, I don't know that it needs to get to room temperature. It's just as easy to cut with a knife. And yeah, I think those were all the questions that I thought of. You can swap out the extracts and that's it. Here we are. Six edible cookie dough success, three different recipes, or three different flavors. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the chat or the comments below. I promise to get back to you. And subscribe if you want. I'm going to be back here next Thursday. Next time I will have a lemon muffin recipe. I have some other funfetti type things uh, planned out for us in the future. Hopefully I'll see you next Thursday. I really appreciate you joining. I know you're all so busy. and. I, I just, I really love spending time with you. I appreciate the questions and this is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so thank you and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye. <laughs>